Hello there and welcome. My name is Kate Kunkel. I'm the creator of Brain Health Matters, a series of online courses, programs, and educational events, all geared toward helping you be the healthiest you can be so your brain is the happiest it can be. And today I am joined by Jessica ritz morick She is known as the intentional organizer for her use of mindset tools in the decluttering process. She's been helping clients create calm, functional, enjoyable space for over 20 years. And we're going to talk to Je Jessica about calming our space to calm our minds. Welcome, Jessica. Hi, Kate. Thank you for having me here. I'm so glad to be here with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you. So tell us a little bit about what um, we can do to declutter our space and our headspace. Oh, perfect. Well, as you know, if you're experiencing clutter, you're probably feeling somewhat distracted and it's often very confusing too. People who have clutter feel stuck, feel overwhelmed, uh, and to use a term, feel paralyzed uh, often by their clutter and don't know how to get over the hurdle of how to start. So, and this ties into Kate's area of expertise, the mind, the memory, and keeping the brain healthy. So there are so many tools I use with clients all these years, and they're all very simple and they can be used individually or cumulatively even better to free up our mind and unburden our memory. Um, so many things like, let's say you're always losing your keys. <laughs> and Boy, that was my problem for a long time. I really struggled with that. Oh, really? Well, you are not alone. It is so common. And the time that people spend searching, searching for one item or another, especially those keys, they know it's here, they know it's here somewhere, and you can't move on. So that in itself is stressful. And it's also confusing. So what I do is I create systems and they are simpler than that word implies. For example, put a push, a push pin rather in, in, the, in the plasterboard by the front door. Um, it's a deck, they sell decorative ones. And when you come home, you immediately hang the keys there. You know where to go. And it's called creating a home for your commonly lost items. So it may take a week or two or more to get in this habit. It is just a habit as often these tools and tips that I speak of are. And if you're worried, but I'll forget to take them on the way out the door, <laughs> which has happened to a lot of people, create another system that makes sure it's your hammock, your catch-all, you know, um, an emergency, make a second set and um, carry that in your handbag. Make sure to transfer it to the next handbag. Or if you're a man, get one of those carabiner clips and hook it to your, you know, buckle on your belt or your pant loop but you have systems in place and they make sure that you are um, taking care of the things that worry you and often get lost. Right. There are so many other tools and tips. Categorize like items with like items. Ah, so this is, this is a problem for a lot of people because you think, okay, well, I do these things together, so I'll put these yeah. things together, but they may not be, like if you need, those things out of that task together, then it's hard to like, how do you yeah. organize them? But I like that idea of same things, right. like same kind of thing. Right. Some of us, it's so easy. There are things that people tend to categorize right off the bat. We put our socks together in a sock drawer, <laughs> right? We put our laundry detergent and stuff for the laundry area. We generally keep that together in all the hundreds and thousands of houses I've seen over the years. But then there are these blank spots where people forget the rest of their stuff and spend a lot of time searching and searching around the home. So if you begin to think of them as categories, like items, stay with like items, that will really help. And if the next thought is, but everything's packed here, I have no available space. Sometimes it's very inter, it's usually very interwoven and it means you have to create one. Think about what's most convenient to you. Do I want it far away or do I need it nearby? And create a space which will mean redesigning where those other things that lived there before came from. 
but at least you'll start to create homes all around your office and all around your home. So but, homes, when you say homes, so that that right in, in itself, that word categorizes things. It seems like, oh, she's got her home, he's got his home, and we can put those things there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's for where you go to get the item in your mind. If you've had years of not being able to find things, your mind will often still say, oh my gosh, where is that? But immediately after that, your mind will get a feeling of calm and relaxation as you remember, oh yes, I now have a home for that. And it is fill in the blank over yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's my favorite though. And this really ties in to our mind and our memory and overcoming obstacles that keep us from cluttering. Because mm. if we were all naturally loving the task, we wouldn't have clutter. Or yeah. if we knew how to do it, we wouldn't have clutter. There are people who this is their hobby, but most people, and especially that I've worked with, don't know where to start. And this will help your mind miraculously. And it's the setting of intentions. And I set, I suggest choosing one, you can always change it, one that resonates with you. And it will start to impress upon your subconscious mind the idea of the outcome you want to achieve. So for example, if you said, I begin to declutter one item at a time, and it flows with ease and grace. It may seem unrelated, but if you say that enough, maybe twice a day and also at bedtime, a very powerful time as we fall asleep, it's amazing what will start to happen. The dread, the stress, and the overwhelm attached to clutter for so many people will dissipate. And I've even had with clients who use this and create it as a habit, I've had people turn around completely to where they are enjoying their decluttering sessions with themselves. So ah. that's pretty miraculous. And, yeah, uh, that is. So I, when you were talking about that, it just brought to mind um, in my book, I talk about how clutter can actually impact the brain itself in this way. So yes. if you are not organized, say your kitchen is a mess. It's just got stuff all over. Not that it's dirty, but that it has right. stuff everywhere. The yes. choices you make about the food you eat, which are so important for your brain health and your mental health, it's difficult to make the right choices because one, a confused mind does not make good choices. And number yes. two, you can't actually get to what you need to make those good choices. You can't get to the fridge or you can't get to that good food. So true, so true. I have seen people, this is very predominant. I've seen it over the 21 years that I've been working with people individually and people tend to give up. When the counters are covered, when there's a big mess, when every drawer is in disarray, they give up and they'll go to the drive-through <sighs> or they will just snatch anything and call it a meal. And the kitchen becomes either unusable or as exactly as you described, Kate, it's very difficult hard to get around. And even the refrigerator, there's nowhere to put new fresh groceries. Even if right. they're throwing out things that have gone bad, it's just cluttered. And yeah. so they give up. And it's also true in other rooms, in the living room. If there's so much clutter that it's on the couch and a person can no longer sit there and feel relaxed and calm in their home environment. I've seen it where a person is now limited to their bedroom and the bed itself. Of course, everyone has differing degrees of clutter. Mm -hmm. To some people, it's just the countertops or just that closet they hide everything in <laughs> and the home looks great. Or just that one room that nobody ever opens the door to. But these are things that add stress. Yes. In the back of our minds or people's minds who are cluttering, and if you're one of them, you'll recognize this. There are these negative thoughts or negative self-talk that yes. swim around like, what is wrong with me? I, I just can't get it together. When am I going to do this? I've got to just get around to that. Oh yeah, I'm going to get around to that. All of those 
over and over again are very draining. And yes. Very hard and the, on your brain. Very yeah. hard. And, and it sort of sucks the life out of somebody feeling compelled to do something about it because that's when people give up. Yeah. So it yeah. becomes a vicious cycle. And, um, and so that was my dog barking in the background. Oh, I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him. <laughs> He's a very large dog. And Okay, great. Great screening of the mic. Um, and so people give up. And so these tools, starting with these baby steps, I tell people to start with baby steps. And it's choosing one little section of the countertop. Maybe it's two foot by two foot or there three you foot by three foot. Or if it's a pile of paper on the floor, pick it up. Sit down at a space at your desk, and if it's all in disarray, clear a little spot for it. No embarrassment, no shame, right. and just make a spot to sit there at your scheduled appointment with yourself. I really recommend scheduling times each week with yourself and decide in advance how long it will be. If it's 30 minutes at first or an hour, great. If you want to Schedule it at a time when you have more availability in case you get thrilled that you're doing it and you want to carry on. Great. But I would put it in a calendar, like when you go to the dentist. Mm, good idea. Right. And if you cancel the dentist, you reschedule it. Right. So you reschedule with yourself. You are important. And this is an important task to free up your memory and things and thoughts that are bogging you down as well as creating beautiful space, calm, right. orderly, and functional. Space. Oh, the, the calm space is so important. I talk about that so much in, in my yeah. courses and everything, because really for our brains, they, they need, firstly, we can't multitask, right? Our brains aren't, right. we, it's, it's that word that I just, I wish nobody would have come up with that word because it makes no. you think you have to be able to do all these things at once and you can't, our brains work sequentially. So if you're concerned about clutter or something that needs to be done so you can do something else, your brain gets confused and you're, yes. you, you just, yeah, it makes you feel bad about yourself. And then you get that snowball effect because the exactly. worse you feel about yourself, the less you do. Exactly. And so another um, wonderful outcome of the scheduling in advance, because these sound like basic little things. Okay, we all know about making lists. We all know about scheduling, but they have alternative outcomes. And scheduling with yourself, um, it makes it more likely to happen, of course. That's been studied. But you also feel empowered. And it, no matter what mood you're in that day, it will help you get out of it into a more uplifted state. And especially if your chosen affirmation or another word for intention um, is said at the beginning of your session, it will begin to change the way you feel. By the end, you will not know where the time went. You can even intend something like, and I accomplish far more than I expected. You can tack that on. That's and okay. every time I've worked with someone who did that, we have accomplished more than they expected. You know so. what? I, I, I did a challenge some, I guess about a year ago now. Um, it was nine, nine days, 27 items over nine days. I can't remember where exactly it came from now, but um, I started with something. I started with my makeup drawer mess and I just threw out everything that was dried up or didn't, I didn't use for right. however long I didn't use it. And that just gave me such a boost. And yes. I just had to choose 27 things that want like each day for nine days, but that 20, that could be 27 pieces of paper. Like it was that simple just exactly. to take it and say, okay, today I'm going to do these 20, any 27 things, I'm going to get rid of them or organize them or whatever you need to do. But yes. um, yeah, that idea of scheduling the time and saying, this is my intention for me, it was easiest because I'm a counter. I count things in my head all the time. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not sure what part of the brain that has to do with, but I'm a counter. So I, I do that. And that makes it work for me, you know, and everybody probably has their own thing, whether it's setting an intention or the, the time. Cause um, most of, I think a lot of people also are just by time. Things are by time. Um. 
Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, there's so many wonderful tips and tools. I love that 27-9 process. I think it originated as a feng shui technique. It might have, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and that's wonderful um, for when there are just so many items and you need to start somewhere and it frees up your energy. You know, yeah, you um, feel like you're doing something. It's like that, yeah. that rolling stone, you know, you start going uh -huh. and then you kind of want to keep going. Exactly. Exactly. It triggers and it shows, it starts to get like insurance under your belt. You've seen that you can actually do this. You've seen that you can actually start. You don't know exactly how it's going to go, but you've chosen a spot. And even in your calendar, you can decide what spot in mm -hmm. advance. Because I've seen people give up when they look at the expanse of, let's say it's the living room and it's got clutter everywhere on every surface, on the floor, or some portion thereof. And someone will look at it and they'll start that judging again. And that makes a person give up. So it becomes the vicious cycle and they have to keep deciding over and over. Now, what do I do? What do I do right now? But if you've decided ahead of time, it's like a roadmap. And I do actually call it a navigational list, not like a normal to-do list, but it's going to guide you from one thing to the next. You make five or 10 entries on this list. Ah. And every time you finish one, you add a new one if there's more to do. So now you know where you're going and there's no mental space in between. Does that make sense? That make yeah, because then you just it's like you're stopping at these rest stops on the way to from New York yes. to, to LA. <laughs> yeah, yes. you've got those those to do. That's wonderful. Jessica, this is awesome. I promise our viewers we don't do much more than 20 minutes because okay. everybody's got their time. But please tell yes. us how we can get in touch with you. And I believe you also have a gift for our viewers. Absolutely. The gift that Kate is going to put mm -hmm. up in the notes um, is the top three, what did I name it? I just created it specially recently. It's the top three tips for decluttering, okay? And it's how to start and it's packed. It's actually got more than three. So it's a PDF document. You can go to my website, which is jessicarit.com. Morick.com and Ritz is not spelled in the traditional way. There's a silent H for Henry in front of R I T Z, but Kate's going to put these yes. up in the notes. And, um, or you can contact me by email, Jessica at Jessica Ritz Morick. I also have a uh, complimentary 30 minute uh, jumpstart. No, no, a clarity session. Wow. So if anybody's interested in that, my uh, website will lead you to a place down below where you can book that. Yes, um, I just checked that out. So I'll make sure that there are links um, under the notes oh, for all this. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. And the three tips, I did get a sneak peek at them. And I think they're awesome. I think they're oh, awesome. Yay. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I have I have five houses on this property. There's a lot of stuff to make sure it's not getting cluttered. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. So a lot I, of things to keep track of. Yes, a lot. So Jessica, this has been awesome. I'll put all of your contact information here in the Facebook group and in the YouTube you. um, notes. So we'll be able to get in touch with Jessica. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. I know you're going to find awesome tips and tools to work with. And hey, schedule your session right after you, you're here yes. with us. Go to your calendar. Yes, do it. It is fabulous. It will jump start. I have a session that I do with people and it's called Jumpstart Your Decluttering. And that's what that will do for yourself if you begin with what Kate just suggested. There you go. Just right as soon as you finish watching this, go to your calendar and book yourself an appointment with you to start exactly. <laughs> after you've read those three tips from Jessica. Thanks so much. You are so welcome. And I am so happy to be here with you all. Thanks again, Kate. Take good care.